The following moles and titration question taken from uh, the AP paper from O levels uh, deals with finding this unknown uh, element M. So a student is given a sample of a metal hydroxide. So this M is a metal hydroxide. Uh, and he's asked to determine the relative atomic mass of M by titrating an aqua solution of MOH with 0.095 mole per decimeter cube of sulfuric acid, which is called solution S. So let's uh, read the question further. A sample of MOH is placed in a previously weighed container, which is then reweighed. And uh, you're given a table which contains the mass of container plus MOH, which is 11.58 grams. And you're, you're given the mass of the container. So what we need to do is calculate the mass of MO, MOH used in the experiment. So what we simply need to do is we need to subtract 11.58 and take out the mass of the container from it. And we're going to get the mass of MOH. So subtracting the two values, it gives me uh, on my calculator, it gives me 2.69 grams. So that is the mass of MOH. So this is the mass of MOH, 2.69 grams, that's being used in the reaction. Moving on to part B, the student transfers a sample of MOH to a beaker. So he's transferring, he transfers the sample MOH to a beaker and adds about 100 cm cube of distilled water and stirs uh, the mixture until the solid dissolves. The contents of the beaker are then transferred to a volumetric flask. So the contents of the beaker are then transferred to a volumetric flask. So let's try and sketch these parts so starting with MOH uh, a sample of MOH which had a mass of 2.69 grams is then dissolved in water so that's being dissolved in water over here and once all the MOH uh, dissolves once all this MOH uh, is dissolved it is then transferred to a volumetric flask and which is uh, which um, so it's transferred to a volumetric flask the solution is then made up to 250 cm cube of distilled water so he's he's adding it's made up to 250 cm3 by adding distilled water so by adding distilled water this solution which contains uh, MOH now the dissolved MOH so it is uh, basically MOH in aqueous state now so now we have a 250 centimeter cube solution of MOH and this is called solution G so this is given a name and this solution is now called solution G and after this uh, this is solution G 25 cm cube of G is then transferred to a conical flask so you're transferring this uh, only 25 cm cube G is being transferred to a conical flask so we're going to transfer this solution G which is 250 cm cube so 25 centimeter cube is transferred so we have 25 centimeter cube of g over here it's transferred to a conical flask and remember this is moh metal hydroxide in aqueous state so we're transferring 25 cm cube of that into a conical flask and you are adding a few drops of methyl orange indicator to this flask so we have added uh, we've added methyl orange to this flask and at, uh, and then S is being put into a burette and added to the solution into the conical flask until an end point is reached. So, so solution S, which is be, is being put into a burette, we need to figure out what solution S was. He did mention S initially, very at the very start he mentioned S. Uh, solution S was 0 0.095 mole per decimeter cube of hydrochloric acid. So you're filling a burette with solution S. So I've drawn a burette over here and I'm going to fill it with S. S is being put over here. It's 0 0.095 mole per decimeter cube. And it has sulfuric acid in it, H2SO4. So solution S is sulfuric acid, whereas uh, we, on the other hand, have 25 cm cube MOH aqueous. Uh, MOH aqueous is put over here, so let's write that again MOH aqueous only 25 cm cube is transferred so there is 25 cm cube of MOH which is an alkali obviously so at the end of the day he's um, filled a burette with 0 0.095 mole per decimeter cube of sulfuric acid and he's going to add that into this flask which contains an alkali and, the, and there's going to be a neutralization reaction between this acid and this metal hydroxide which is an alkali so um, 
in the next part he's asking what is the color change in the conical flask before s is added and at the end point now before s is added this flask over here contains moh which is an alkali so methyl orange is orange yellow in an alkali so initially in alkaline conditions methyl orange is orange yellow and as sulfuric acid is added sulfuric acid is going to neutralize this alkali and once sulfuric acid it goes in excess and you add too much sulfuric acid the solution would over here in this flask would become acidic so at the end point when the titration must be stopped when you're adding excess sulfuric acid in acidic conditions methyl orange gives a red color so as soon as methyl orange changes red that means you're adding too much sulfuric acid now because all the moh has been neutralized so that's the point when you should stop the titration in the next part part c the student does three titrations so basically uh we now at this part over here this is where the titration is occurring uh, s is being added to this moh so the amount of s that's being added three separate titrations are done three separate titrations are done to improve the result of the titration you get more accurate results if you take average of uh, different titrations so the experiment is performed again and again in three separate titrations and we are we're supposed to find the amount of s that's being added from the burette into the flask for neutralizing moh so uh, he's given us a, a diagram he's showing uh, uh, the diagram below shows parts of the burette with the liquid levels at the beginning and end of each titration so there's one titration then he repeats the experiment and the second titration is performed and then a third titration is performed then the amount of s that's added would be the amount there would be an initial uh, burette reading and then there would be the final burette reading at the end of the titration the difference is going to give us the amount of s that's being added so he's given us a table and we need to fill this table first so for experiment 1 this titration 1 the initial burette reading the burette was filled up to the 0 cm cube mark and once the titration had ended the final burette reading gave us 25.90 cm cube so the final value was 25.90 cm cube the initial burette reading was 0.00 cm cube remember to take titration readings uh, burette readings up to two decimal places because that's the accuracy of the burette so the volume of s that's added is going to be the difference between the two values which in this case is going to be 25.90 cm cube so the volume of s would be the difference in the initial and the final burette readings so moving to titration 2 the initial value is 23.30 cm cube and the final titration reading is uh, burit reading is 48.60 cm cube so using my calculator i'm going to try and estimate the value it's going to be it's going to be 48.60 minus 23.3 and the answer is 25.30 centimeter cube so that's the volume of s that's used in the second titration and moving to the third titration the initial burit reading is 7.3 and the final is 32.4 so the initial is 7.30 centimeter cube and the final burit reading is 32.40 centimeter cube taking the difference it's going to be 32.40 minus 7.30 and the value that i'm getting is 25.10 cm3 now in the last part i need to take the best titration results and the best titration results are the ones that are going to be close to together because that's going to show that the values are consistent this value is slightly off which means there must be some error it's slightly anomalous there must be some experimental error in this value so these two values are close to each other so i'm going to select these two values as my best titration results and in the next part using these results find the average volume of s now i'm going to take the two values and find an average value of the volume of s that's added so it, i'm going to take the average of 25.30 cm cube and 25.10 cm cube and i'm going to divide that by 2 that would give me the average which in this case is going to be 25.20 cm cube so moving to to the diagram the volume of s the average volume of s uh, that is being added that we have found is 25.20 cm3 from our titration result
In the next part, uh, part D, you're supposed to calculate the number of moles of sulfuric acid in the average volume of 0.095 mole per decimeter cube of sulfuric acid. So, so uh, our titration result is in. It's 25.20 cm cube of S that's being used. And the concentration is also known. So we know the volume and we know the concentration. So we can find out the moles of S that are being added into this flask over here. So, so the volume is known. It's 25.20 centimeter cube. So that is the volume and uh, moles would be cons volume multiplied by concentration or concentration multiplied by volume. So the volume must be in dm cube. So I'm going to divide that by 1000 and I'm going to multiply it by the concentration, which is uh, for sulfuric acid is given as 0 0.095 mole per decimeter cube. So that's given over here. And uh, using my calculator, the answer to this part is going to be, it's going to be 0 0.0. 0 .0 double zero uh two three nine four moles so it's zero point double zero two three nine four moles of sulfuric acid that are being added so i'm going to add that to the diagram as well so the amount of moles of s that are being used in this reaction are zero point double zero two three nine and four moles of sulfuric acid that are being run from the burette into this conical flask over here now moving to the next part, part E, uh, he's asking us using your answer to D and the equation, calculate the number of moles of MOH in 25 cm cube of G. So we found the moles of sulfuric acid that are being added, uh, going back and have a look at the diagram. We found the moles of sulfuric acid that are being added. Uh, let's underline that. Uh, it's 0 0.00394 moles of sulfuric acid H2SO4 that are being added into this flask 25 cm cube which contains MOH aqueous. Now the ratio according to the ratio according to the ratio given in the equation um, we have 0 0.00294 moles of sulfuric acid that are being added. Now according to the ratio uh, it's one re reacting with two MOH so it's one ratio two so the amount of moles of MOH that are present in the flask over there it's going to be twice that value so it's going to be 2 multiplied by 0 0.002394 moles and solving this on my calculator it's going to be multiplying the value by 2 it's going to be 0 0.0047 0 0.0047 0 0.0047 8 moles so that is the amount of moles of MOH uh, that would be present in this flask over here. So I'm going to write that down as well. So it's going to be 0 0.004788 88 moles. Because according to the ratio given in the equation, one sulfuric acid reacts with two MOH. So 0 0.002394 moles of sulfuric acid that are being added would react with 0 0.0047. 88 moles of MOH. Now in the next part, part F, we're using an answer to E, calculate the number of moles of MOH in 250 cm cube. So he's asking us to find the moles of MOH in this 250 cm cube solution G, which was MOH aqueous, but we only titrated 25 cm cube. So we, when we were doing titration, we only used 25 cm cube. So if 25 cm cube of MOH contains 0.00, 4788 moles of MOH, then 250 cm cube is 10 times that many. So 250 cm cube would contain X moles. X would be the unknown and using ratio. So 25 cm cube MOH contains 0 0.047, 0 0.004788 moles. So 250 cm cube is going to contain 10 times that amount. So uh, we can either use the unitary method or it's pretty obvious uh, using the unitary method. I'm going to crisscross, multiply them, and uh, the value is basically going to be, eventually it's going to be 0 0.004788 multiplied by 10, and the answer is going to be 0 0.04788 moles. So the moles of MOH in this solution over here, G, would be 0 0.0047. Uh, there would be one zero less, so let's correct that, 47. 88 moles. So that's the amount of moles of MOH in this solution G over here. Moving to the next part, part G, it says that using our answers to A and F, calculate the mass of one mole of MOH. Now we found the moles of MOH uh, uh, 
MOH was dissolved over here and all the moles of MOH were basically transferred to this volumetric flask over here. So the moles of MOH, uh, we know the moles of MOH. Uh, so we one quantity that we do know about MOH is the moles. It's 0 0.004788. Uh, a single zero. And uh, we also know the mass of MOH that we used in the experiment. It is 2.69 grams. So we also know the mass of MOH that we dissolved. It's 2.69 grams. Now, if you have moles and if you have mass, you can use the formula moles is equal to. So moles, 0 0.04788. Moles is equal to mass divided by the molar mass. So we have the mass as well. So let's write down the mass. The mass is uh, 2.69 grams divided by the molar mass, which is MR. So using my calculator, uh, I'm going to try and find out what the MR is going to be. So it's going to be, it's going to be 2.69 divided by 0 0.04788, and the answer I'm getting is approximately rounding it off. It's going to be 56. So that is the MR of MOH. And now I need to find using the answer calculate the relative atomic mass of M. Now the MR of MOH is coming out to be equal to 56. So if I remove the oxygen and the hydrogen, so if I remove 16, and if I remove 1, uh, I would be left with 39. So the AR of uh, this, uh, the atomic mass of M is going to be 39. And according to the prior table, this is going to be potassium, which is K, which has a symbol K. So that is the answer to this entire titration question. The MR or the relative atomic mass, AR of M, comes out to be equal to 39.